If you were able, would you please stand? Burlington as we know it today is rich in historical and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis. From the Anishinaabe, the Mohawk, the Neutrals, the Ojibwe, and the Seneca. Our lands surrounding Lake Ontario are steeped in indigenous history. Acknowledging the land that we gather on allows us to embrace and meet our obligations to the calls for action under the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We honor with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the indigenous people with whom the Upper Canada Treaties were signed and our responsibility as treaty members. We also honor the heritage of the Métis. The territory wherein our church resides is mutually covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant between the Iroquois Confederacy, the Ojibwe, and other nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sorry. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the world. Through Christ our healer and Lord. Amen. A reading from Proverbs. 
A good name to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fall. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause, and despoils of life those who despoil them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 125 should be responsibly, please. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Which cannot be moved for the bonds forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. From this time and forevermore, for the scepter of wickedness, shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good. And those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their own crooked ways. The Lord will lead away the evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. The second reading is from James, second chapter. My brothers and sisters, do not claim the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ of glory, while showing partiality. For if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and you take notice of one wearing fine clothes and say, have a seat here in good place, please. While to the other who is poor, you say, stand there or sit by my footstool. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has God not has <coughs> has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich and faith in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor person. It is not the rich who oppresses you. It is not they who drag you into their courts. It is not they who blasphemize <coughs> the excellent name that was invoked over you. If you really ful fulfill the true law, the royal law, according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Do well, you do well, but if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What is good, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Surely that faith cannot save, can it? If a brother or a sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What good is that? So faith by itself has no works, is dead. Word of God, word of life.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about Jesus, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now, the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged Jesus to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers in his ears and spat and touched his tongue then, looking up to heaven, Jesus sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered it, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Christ. Well, this will be fun because the notes aren't there. <laughs> Andrew, have we got the slides, though? There we go. Wonderful. That will be interesting to see how much I remember of my own sermon. <laughs> Jesus is pretty offensive in today's reading, right? He calls a woman a dog? Like, seriously? Seriously? That's what he says? That's not the notion of Jesus that I was taught in Sunday school. Right? That was not my understanding of how we were to be in the world. Now, some scholars try and say that, you know, it... it it was just a term that was used to refer to Gentiles. We've had other terms that we've just used to refer to people, and they are offensive. And we don't do that, hopefully, anymore. Right? How? How could it be that Jesus decides to fall into this. How is it that this person who is supposed to be so connected with God, part of the one holy and undivided trinity, how? How could the 
pinnacle example of what our faith is supposed to be be so offensive? Well, I think we get a little bit of that in the story. He gets to the house, and he doesn't want anyone to know that he's there. He's probably tired. He's probably had enough. He just wants to go off and have a little break by himself and not have a mob follow him and not have to teach anything else. He wants his Sabbath, his downtime, his opportunity to go away. And yet, here's someone else begging him to do something. I don't know about you, but when I'm in those moments when I want to go away and the phone rings and I'm off to do something else, I'm not always at my best, right? And I think, I think in this bit of the story, we get to see part of the fully human part of Jesus. Because sometimes we say things that on, on retrospection aren't quite true to our core. I think there are times that we get tired, like I imagine Jesus is, where things come out of our mouths before we begin to even think of what we're saying. Andrew, if I can get the next one. But in this story, Jesus learns to respond differently. Now, if we believe again that Jesus is part of the Trinity, part of God from the beginning of creation through all of the stories, then what does it mean for Jesus to learn? Well, I think it means the same thing as it means for us to learn. Because sometimes we have learned certain things and then we fall away from them and then we're called back. But even the story of our God is one where God adapts over time, right? God created the heavens and the earth and Adam and Eve and everything was good. Then God kicked them out of the garden when things weren't good. Then at some point, God decided that God was going to send the flood and wipe everyone out but one family. And then God decided to destroy maybe a city or two. And then God decided to send God's son. God learns and adapts, tries to find new ways to engage with us as we try and find new ways to engage with God. So the question is, can we learn to respond differently? Well, see, that's where the second miracle in this reading today becomes important. And it's probably something that many people would miss unless you happen to understand biblical geography and you really read your scriptures well. I had a commentary help me on this one. Jesus, when he encounters the deaf man with the speech impediment, is in the Decapolis. He's been there once before. He was there when he encountered the man sometimes referred to as legion, right? The man with so many demons that Jesus ordered the demons out of the man. They ran into the swine. The swine ran into the water. And how did the people respond? Jesus, please get a, as far away from us as possible. Don't ever come back here. We don't want to see this ever again, even though Jesus was able to heal the man with many demons. They said, go away. That's it. We're done with you. 
And just a few chapters later, just a few chapters later, Jesus is back in the area and someone or some group of people bring this deaf man with a speech impediment to Jesus so that he can heal that person. We don't know if it was his friends or his family or maybe both, but it's clearly more than one person who comes for that healing. Maybe, maybe by Jesus showing that he could model learning and changing in his response to the Syrophoenician woman about her daughter, maybe in the modeling of the people in the Decapolis that they could change, maybe there is something for us to learn. Maybe there is something for us to see in the need for change. Change isn't easy. Change particularly when we feel that we've been changed. Not change that we pick for ourselves, but change that somehow comes upon us. That change is sometimes difficult. But isn't that why we're here? Don't you come to church? Don't you read the scriptures? Don't you participate in communion to be changed? So that you don't respond in the offensive ways that, that sometimes we do as humans? But that you respond with the love of God. That you respond knowing that there are no barriers to God's love. That you respond knowing that it is possible for God to love everyone. May our hearts always be changed by the scriptures. May our hearts always be changed by our gathering here. The fact that God comes into our life and changes us, we give thanks for today. Amen. If you're able, will you please stand? With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended.
drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for all our members, especially Karen Douglas and Alex, Loretta and Ron De Silva, you and Rhonda Eisler, Patty and John X. We pray for our Reverend Colin Cameron. We pray for our bishops, Susan Bell, Colin Johnson, Michael Price, and our bishop-elect, Carla Blakely. In the Anglican Church of Canada, the most reverend Lynn McNaughton, Metropolitan, and the clergy and peoples of the ecclesiastical province of the British Columbia and Yukon. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, the assistant to the bishop and staff of the British Columbia Synod. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, the Church of the Province of Myanmar, Burma, and the Lutheran World Federation, the Mera Evangelical Church. Encourage our churches to celebrate and embrace peoples of diverse backgrounds, experiences, and abilities. Deepen our commitment to ecumenical and interreligious partnerships, especially the Waterloo Declaration between the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, the Anglican Church of Canada, and the Moravian Church in Canada. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renew our commitment to protect rivers, lakes, streams, and make good steward of water in our homes and communities. Preserve wetland habitats and the creatures that make their homes there. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace among peoples in conflict and strengthen global commitments to nonviolent solutions. Guide all who seek refuge from war to a safe haven. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Surround them in your tender embrace and sustain all who provide ongoing care and support. Bring hope and healing to people struggling with addiction and nourish the spirits of all who are in recovery. Grant wholeness to all we hold in our heart, particularly those listed on the slide. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Inspire artists and musicians, woodworkers and quilters, poets and dancers. Revive those who artistic wells have run dry and enliven all who doubt their creative talents. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We hold before you, your servant Charles our King, praying that guided by your spirit, under him this nation may be wisely and justly governed and your church proclaim your gospel and peace. May he be dedicated to you in heart and mind and soul. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for all who have died and now find their rest in you. May their faithful witness guide us in our daily life with you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
my siblings, sisters, and brothers, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please show a sign of Christ's peace. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you were able, would you please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God, the gifts of God for the people of God.
holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with your dignity, with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. God Almighty, God Most Merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, follow Jesus. <laughs>